Hi guys and welcome, welcome to the Audi S5 Sportback. This is my own car for the time being. Uh, I am selling it, but well, I'm driving it for some time. This is a 2011, a, a late 2011. So it's a facelift version of the Audi S5 Sportback, which means you get uh, newer design LED taillights uh, and newer design LED front you know, running lights with Xenons. And that's about it from the outside. Yes, there's new bumpers, etc., but you can really barely tell it's any different than the previous uh, pre-facelift version. Uh, big 19-inch alloys, 20s were an option. This car is also running on spacers. I think it's 10 or 15 millimeters, so it's wider uh, and you know, re really looks uh, beefy and mean. This is the business side of the Sportback. This is why you would buy a Sportback in the first place. Look at that space. You can fit a bike in here, no problem, suitcases, whatever. The seats fold flat, you can take this part away somehow. Anyway, you can take it away and it really is a spacious car for a sleek looking coupe. So quickly, let's sit at the back. Uh, as you can tell, this car has the red and black color combination. Uh, suits really well with the red on the outside, I think. Misano red is the paint color. Um, you have my Isofix here, which is currently not even properly fitted because I moved it. But yes, you can have Isofix at the back of a Audi S5 Sportback. Seating position, really comfortable, have to say. Um, leather quality is amazing. It is Napa, so it's really soft and it's everywhere. Mm, so nice. Black headlining. I wish it had a sunroof and, well, a better stereo system because currently it's the stock version. And if I was specking up my car as new or really, you know, looking for one, I would probably go with the one with the Bang & Olufsen stereo. It's just that much better. One thing I really do like about the S5 and you know any A5 at that matter, if you have uh, keyless entry like I do, uh, let me just show you the, the key. The key is normal apart from the fact that you get S5 logo on the key. So if you're just dining, you can just put it on the table and you have a S5, you have an S, a Sport Audi, you're just that much better than everybody else. Anyhow, all four doors have sensors, so this means it makes life so much easier. You can just touch any door and it will open. The interior has held up rather nicely. This car has done uh, 184,000 kilometers. Let me just sh start it up. Quite a beefy. So the sound is better because this car has catalytic converters. Uh, the sporty versions, these are the high flow cats. And this means that on the highway it is very silent. Uh, you can easily drive without any drone uh, up to 130, 140 even. Uh, above that the RPMs do get higher and well it's not that quiet anymore. But until then it's really usable on a everyday basis. And on the, on the upside if you floor the car you just get this brah brah. It's so mean! It's like, it's like this car has a straight piped exhaust, but it, it doesn't. And currently I'm in comfort mode. Uh, there are, you know, five different modes you can choose from. 
efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic or individual. Individual, of course, you can set it just as you would like, but on an everyday basis, comfort is the one to go for, as this car has a pulley uh, remap. So it has the supercharger pulley swapped out and a remap done to the engine and the gearbox and also the drive select settings. This means that in efficiency mode, you can floor the car, but I don't know how much horsepower it makes, but I'm guessing it's around 200 uh, because it is slow as F. Uh, it just won't move and it is efficiency. And it is, it is rather smooth at that because uh, the gearbox has a different setting as well. This means, you know, stop, start, city traffic. It's just so easy because it immediately goes into second gear. It doesn't change uh, down to first gear when you're slowing down. It's not clunky, it's not juttery, it's just very smooth. Uh, but since I do like the oomph and the sound, uh, comfort is the way to go. Uh, what also changes is the steering wheel hardness, uh, preciseness and the suspension stiffness. So the dampers get a little bit harder the more down to the sporty way you go. And if you put it into dynamic, it is the most firm. this car is that speeds really do build up rather rather fast uh, meaning that uh, <laughs> you really do have to watch what speed you're doing because the police is just around the corner hello so yeah in essence these are very different uh, and you do feel the difference but uh, it don't really change them from comfort to the dynamic and auto seems to be just pointless for me so driving experience as a whole as this car has a remap from uh, 250, sorry, 245 kilowatts. Uh, this car now has, oh, look at that TTRS, very nice. Uh, it now has 335 kilowatts. That's, that's a lot of kilowatts. Let me just tell you that. So it converts into 450 horsepower. Note to 100 should take under four seconds. I have dragged it with my draggy performance meter um, and it showed me 4.37 but it was with winter tires and with a person on board and a full tank of fuel so I am guessing that if the conditions are perfect it will do under four seconds easily and also you have to bear in mind that this engine really likes the colder climate I did the launch uh, I think it was 24 five degrees or something like that and if you're wondering why I did a 25 degree launch with winter tires it's because I just hadn't changed the tires yet and I got the car with winter tires so leave me alone um, the car feels fast the car feels really fast and it's very linear uh, you don't get the oomph of the turbocharged engine and some people who have driven it well they just stop accelerating at let's say five five and a half thousand rpm but that's where the music starts you have to push this car to the red line because that you know six thousand rpm and up is where this car really shines and it's get you know it, it's the most amazing sound note you can ask from a car it's just it sings it really sings Does it feel as fast as a Golf R, my Golf R for example, which did a 3.9? Uh, I have to say it doesn't. My Golf felt faster. Uh, I don't know whether if it was uh, lighter, whether the turbo engine made a difference, but it felt a bit quicker. Uh, but this doesn't mean this car is slow, not one bit. And comparing the noise, you just cannot, uh, you cannot compare these cars. The noise of the V6 it's just something else, it really is. 
what about reliability? Uh, really, there is no issues. That really, there are no big issues uh, with the tune. Um, this car has been running with the tune for three, four years now. Uh, nothing really has gone wrong. Yes, it has had its engine chain replaced at around 150,000 kilometers and also the gearbox has had some jobs done to it but other than that it's really a solid solid car. Uh, now there is one problem uh, with these cars and it's not even related to the fact that uh, I have a stage 2 S5 or maybe it, ha maybe it does, I don't know. Anyway, the catalytic converters tend to burn out and when I say they tend to burn out, I say that they probably and most likely will because uh, the engine is running so hot uh, and the converters are so close to the engine, they're like right behind the engine block down there. This means the honeycomb inside the converters just basically gives up and doesn't really care anymore. So. Uh, at, at some point you're just gonna get a free-flowing exhaust, a better note and well that's why this car has sport catalytic converters uh, it's because it blew out the original ones and to be honest I'm not really sure if the sport cats are doing its job properly but they're definitely better than just a you know empty cat um, so yeah it's it's legal no problem there, uh, but this is a problem uh, to look out with these cars. But to to be really honest, uh, if the cats were really empty, I couldn't really be bothered because it sounds good. It doesn't affect the job of the engine. Uh, the catalytic converters in this car have been tuned out anyway, so it won't, you know, Christmas tree up the dashboard. It's just it's just fine. It's just fine. Um, so the driving experience is really nice, it's a solid car, the DSG gearbox, it's, it's really holding up nicely, I did a couple of launches, no problems, it's just bang on, clack clack clack, let's go, uh, changing gears, it's really fast, it's really responsive, uh, in sport mode, it's snappy, in D mode, it's very nice, uh, and as I mentioned before, in efficiency, it's just smooth, like butter. Uh, one other thing to notice is the fact that this car is really quiet. If you're thinking it's, it has pillarless uh, windows and well, it, it's gotta be noisy on the inside. No, it's not. It's, it's actually really quiet. It almost all the time comes down to the tires. This car is running on Continentals. Uh, not brand new tires, but the brand new-ish tires. And they are really silent. Uh, even considering the fact that these are 255 section tires, so they are really, really wide. Um, it doesn't, you know, pull anywhere from the road. The dynamic of the chassis is working really well. Um, and, and even the fuel economy is not that bad, actually. Considering the fact that this is a 450 horsepower car, uh, I am getting, let me see, where is my general, oh, a 14.1. Um, 14.1 uh, I drive 90% in the city 90% if you go on the highway and you just don't floor it uh, I have gotten in the low 7 liters per 100 kilometers so it's really not that bad economy wise it just comes down to the fact how hard do you drive this car if you floor it it's gonna drink up everything you give it uh, but if you you know feather it if you drive it normally, it's not that bad. It really, it really is not. Um, I think that's the driving side taken care of. Uh, interior, top-notch Audi. I think this is one of the, you know, periods where Audi was just at the top of its level. I think is where it should be. Steering wheel nicely stitched. Uh, this Lambo style uh, cutouts here. Buttons are solid. Um, there are no squeaky bits. This metal is really a metal piece, so it's not uh, plasticky. Uh, the infotainment, uh, yes, it's getting a bit old now, and I wish it had Apple CarPlay. But by the way, you can add Apple CarPlay via third-party companies. But it's it's snappy, and it does what it should because you listen to the radio, 
you use some navigation if you are, you know, like 50 years old, but other than that, you can use your... Wait. Huh? Other than that, you can use your phone as a normal person with Waze. Um, by the way, I really do like this uh, Pesas uh, mount with the 12 Pro. It just clicks there. It's magnetic and it just works perfectly. Uh, yeah, heated, heated seats, climate control, you know, all your media controls down here. A nice Quattro badge here. Yeah, I really do like this car. Um, a very nice RS3. A very nice RS3. And the sound, the sound is what you will fall in love with. It really is. It's just something, something different. I am so used to turbocharged cars. Uh, just make it, maybe let's do a quick. So guys, thank you for watching. This was my review of the Audi S5 Sportback. It is a fairly reliable car uh, and it most likely won't bankrupt you. And but yeah, there's really nothing more to say. It's just a very nice car to drive. It's a solid car. Thank you for watching again. Uh, please do consider subscribing if you are not subscribed and hit that like button. Bye bye.